Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Elena. Good evening. Okay, we are in another session. We are in the session number two of this uh, module. And also we are in the session number two of this first week. Um, we are going to continue with the topics that we have for this day. Um, for today, we have a couple of activities that we are going to perform. Um, we are going to have some exercises and also we are going to learn something about the pronunciation. So we are going to begin with that part, uh, the pronunciation, and then we are going to continue with uh, some exercises and also we are going to see um, a um, grammatical topic. Uh, and also we are going to work on the platform. So the first thing is that we are going to um, listen a short video in this case in which we are going to um, analyze some situations about the intonation and also the pronunciation of some words and phrases. And then I'm going to explain you what is important to know or to focus on that kind of information. We know that uh, it's important to uh, pay attention or to be focused on the intonation of the words, uh, because in some cases we can sound uh, different than the meaning of our phrases. So in that case, it's very important that we um, learn how to differentiate some of the intonation that we can use in English. Así que vamos a empezar con la entonación. Es una parte muy importante del inglés, no solo del español o de cualquiera de los idiomas eh, que podemos nosotros aprender. Es Básicamente algo importante para todos los idiomas en general. Pero en este caso nos vamos a enfocar más que todo en inglés, que es lo que eh, nuestra base. Eh, con la entonación nosotros sabemos que tenemos eh, diferentes tipos de entonaciones. El, la entonación de raising intonation, the lowering intonation, um, a combination of them. Eh, but that kind of intonation, that kind of uh, use of the tone of the voice will help us to um, maybe help us with a speech uh, to convince someone to talk about a specific topic, uh, to make people feel like very curious about the things that we are saying. Cuando tenemos nosotros algún discurso, utilizamos los diferentes, eh, las diferentes entonaciones para llamar la atención de la persona que está escuchando. En este caso, básicamente, esta entonación se refiere a eso. Good evening. Eh, es la manera en la que nosotros modulamos, manejamos nuestra voz a la hora de hablar. Así que primero vamos a escuchar un pequeño audio de uno de los videos que aparece en la plataforma y obviamente este solo es como un ejemplo y luego yo les voy a ir explicando un poco más sobre la entonación. But in this case, we are not going to um, have a very long information about the intonation. We are going to do it like a very short um, topic and then we are going to focus on the other activities that we are going to perform. In this case, we have a conversation. We are going to practice a conversation. Then we are going to learn something about the questions with how. We are going to make an exercise using a how or questions with how. And also we are going to have an activity in which you are going to be involved, all of you, because I have a different questions. In this case, it's not like something very serious. Um, we have different kind of questions. Uh, it could be, or we can say that they are kind of funny, uh, but it, it's going to be um, uh, something different because you are going to, um, you're going to learn how to apply those questions with how uh, in a different context of your life. In this case, we can use it with your friends. We can also use it with uh, your partner's job or when you are in a party, you're in a meeting, 
they are that kind of a question that you can use as a ice breakers when you want to talk with someone vamos a tener una parte eh, de preguntas no son preguntas serias sino que son preguntas que se pueden utilizar para eh, no sé, hacer como una pequeña reunión con los amigos, con los compañeros de trabajo, pero que estén enfocados en el uso de how. Pero eso lo vamos a ir viendo más adelante. Primero comenzamos con la entonación, luego vamos a ver la conversación que vamos a practicar, porque vamos a practicar una conversación. Luego nos enfocamos en las preguntas con how, cómo construirlas, para qué nos sirven, cuándo las usamos. Y luego vamos con las prácticas eh, del de ejercicio de, de las preguntas con how. Y luego vamos a la actividad donde todos nos vamos a involucrar. So, we are going to begin and I'm going to go to the platform because I have here the video in which you are going to listen something related to the intonation. In this case, this one is called intonation with direct address we're going to listen this audio or we are going to watch this video twice because we are going to focus on the pronunciation of the words vamos a verlo dos veces para escuchar bien lo que es la pronunciación de las palabras o cómo las pronuncian en el video así que i'm going to share the screen with the sound and we are going to listen carefully the video in this case it's very short video it is not like kind of long. It's a couple of uh, seconds. So we're going to begin with this one. This one. So listen carefully. In this session, participants will listen to intonation with direct address. This helps sound natural when speaking. There is usually falling intonation and a pause before the name. You're really fit, Paul. She looks tired, James. I feel great, Dr. Lee. Remember to listen and practice as many times as needed. In this session, participants will listen to intonation with direct address. This helps sound natural when speaking. There is usually falling intonation and a pause before the name. You're really fit, Paul. She looks tired, James. I feel great, Dr. Lee. Remember to listen and practice as many times as needed. Okay, in this case, we have like a short explanation or something related to um, this information that we have here. It's kind of confusing because uh, maybe you can think, but what? What is the, the use? What is the meaning of this um, information? So in this case, it said, uh, these statements with a direct address they, uh, there is usually fallen intonation and a pause before the name. In este caso, la entonación, ¿verdad? Eh, cae, no es una entonación que sube, sino que es una entonación que cae, hace una pausa antes de un nombre. Así como lo vemos ahí. You are really fit. You are really fit, Paul. You are really fit, Paul. Then in the second one, she looks tired, James. She looks tired, James. Vamos hacia abajo con el tono de la voz. I feel great. I feel great, Dr. Lee. En este caso, cuando tenemos un nombre al final de nuestra oración, vamos a hacer un tono bajo. Vamos a bajar en entonación. Pero ahora vamos a eh, aprender un poco más sobre estas entonaciones y si podemos conocer otras más, it could be a very good. So we are going to uh, begin with uh, general information about the intonation. But let me stop this one. And we're going to go to the document.
Okay. Okay, and we have here the document. So the topic is the fallen or the intonation of a fallen address. And in this case, it said that the intonation of direct uh, address depends on its position in the sentence and on the style of a speech. It's very important to know the position of the words or the position um, of the sentence and in the style of a speech. When we are talking with our friends, we use a different kind of intonation. When we are in a formal meeting, we use another uh, kind of intonation. Uh, when we are having a meeting through the internet, we change that intonation also. So in that case, we need to focus on the type of a meeting that we are having at that moment. What is the impact that we want to create with our voice? Aquí tenemos que estar muy eh, enfocados también en cómo queremos sonar. No simplemente que, ah, yo llevo un nombre al final de mi oración, entonces yo voy a bajar la entonación, sino que tenemos que enfocarnos también en qué tipo de eh, estilo de eh, conversación estamos manteniendo en ese momento. Como les decía, si es con los amigos, es un tono relajado, no vamos a ser muy formales, vamos a sonar tranquilos, ¿verdad? No nos vamos a forzar mucho por sonar como que sí sabemos de todo el tema, ¿verdad? Que estamos exponiendo. En cambio, si es una reunión de trabajo, pues nosotros vamos a sonar un poco más formales, más serios, seguros de lo que estamos hablando. Es diferente. Entonces, tenemos que eh, pensar primero en eso. Then it says that at the beginning of the sentence, direct address forms a separate group. It is stressed and is pronounced with the following tone in formal serious speech. En este caso, si al principio de nuestra oración podemos poner como el direct address, eh, esto va a formar un grupo separado entre una oración y la otra y se estresa y se pronuncia con un tono más bajo que un, eh, una conversación formal. For example, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we must discuss an important problem today. Vamos subiendo, bajando, subiendo, bajando. Ladies and gentlemen, we must discuss an important problem today. Eso lo hacemos para llamar la atención de nuestro público. Ladies and gentlemen, we must discuss an important problem today. No es tan marcado, obviamente no vamos a ir nosotros en nuestra mente diciendo arriba, abajo, arriba, abajo, arriba, abajo. We are going to do it like very natural, but we are going to focus on that um, sound. Lo vamos a ir marcando nosotros, ¿verdad? Despacio sin que suene muy forzado. It is pronounced with the following rising, violent rising, a tone to attract the listener's attention in a friendly conversation. Estas son conversaciones amigables. Subimos, bajamos, subimos, bajamos y mantenemos esa tonalidad para llamar la atención. Mary, come here. Mary, come here. Empezamos arriba y bajamos de una sola vez. Mary, come here. In the middle or at the end of the sentence, direct address does not form a separate sense group. Cuando tenemos esa entonación al final de la oración, no se van a crear dos oraciones. Es una sola oración con un tono bajo. Um, and continues the melody of the previous sense group. Uh, sometimes it may be pronounced with a loud rising tone. That's all and right. Darling, good morning, Mr. Wood. Mantenemos una leve uh, crecimiento, un leve, eh, o elevamos un poco la voz, pero no se nota mucho. En el caso de please, tenemos diferentes entonaciones para please. And we are going to see some examples or some details about the use of the word please. You know that in some cases we can um, use please um, when we want something. Uh, we can say please when we are like uh, angry or something like that. Tenemos diferentes formas de decir por favor. 
por favor, de pedir un favor, por favor, de estar harto de una situación. O, ah, por favor, cuando no hay nada más que hacer. Entonces, en este caso, vamos a ver cómo se utilizan en inglés el please o las diferentes entonaciones del please. Intonation of please. And it says that the intonation of please depend on its position in the sentence. Depende de la posición donde se encuentre. At the beginning of the sentence, it is stressed, but as a rule, it doesn't form a separate sense group. Cuando lo encontramos al principio de la oración, se estresa, o sea, sube el tono de la voz, pero no eh, crea una separación del grupo. O sea, que el grupo va a mantener ese mismo tono. Vamos a ver el número uno. Intonation of please depends on the position in the sentence. And we have here at the beginning. At the beginning of the sentence, it is stressed, It doesn't form a separate sense group. We have the example here. It says, please repeat the nouns there three times. Please repeat the nouns three times. I'm going to make the pause here and we're going to write times. Ahí tenemos una pausa donde está el guión. Please repeat the nouns there. I mean, please repeat the nouns three times. Y bajamos. Please repeat the nouns three times. No, no es como que lo vayamos marcando mucho, pero sí se nota cuando baja. Please repeat the nouns three times. Y se termina la oración. Luego tenemos number three. In the middle, cuando está en medio. In the middle. In the middle of the sentence. In the middle of the sentence, please can be stressed or unstressed. And it doesn't form a separate sense group. Aquí se puede estresar o simplemente... No es necesario. Aquí eh, tenemos las dos opciones. And we have the example of the sentence. And it says, would you please switch uh, on, the, on the tape record? Would you please switch on the tape record? Mantenemos una sola, um, una sola tonalidad. Would you please switch? On the tape record. Like this. Would you please switch on the tape recorder? Es un solo tono. No es necesario cambiarle a falling or rising intonation. 
The next one, at the end, al final de la oración, at the end of the sentence. At the end of the sentence, please is on stress. Aquí no se va a estresar, aquí no le vamos a cambiar eh, mucho, aquí simplemente no se estresa. So in this case, it is not, uh, it is unstressed and it doesn't form a separate group. Uh, it is pronounced with the melody of the previous group. So in this case, we are not going to change um, the pronunciation. And we have the example. In this case, would you create, will, will you read louder, please? Would you read louder, please? Will you read louder, please? And we don't uh, make a pause in this case. Would you read louder, please? No hacemos pausa, no nos detenemos. Simplemente seguimos con la misma tonalidad de la palabra. Así que en este caso, when it is at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of the words, we can make kind of little differences between the pronunciation or intonation of the words, but it is not like something we need to focus on like a very long time. It is kind of short. So don't worry about this one. This is a very short topic and we end this one because we um, need to practice, but in this case, we are not going to do it like this. We are going to have a conversation in which we are going to practice some pronunciation and some intonation of the words. But let me go to the part in which we are going to see the video. Because we are going to listen a conversation about fitness. Remember that we were talking about something uh, related to the exercise. We were talking about the exercise and um, how often do we... Uh, exercise ourselves. Estuvimos hablando del ejercicio, qué tanto nos ejercitábamos, qué tan seguido, y continuamos con esa línea del ejercicio. Pero en este caso, vamos a escuchar una conversación que tiene que ver con, eh, con eso del ejercicio, pero también con las preguntas con how. Vamos a escuchar primero la conversación, luego vamos a hacer una pequeña práctica Luego vamos a explicar un poco sobre las how questions or WH uh, questions, specifically with how, and then we are going to make the other activity. But in this case, we are going to listen first the conversation. We are going to listen twice. If you can take a screenshots of the conversation, you can do it because uh, we are going to do a practice with uh, that conversation. Si le pueden sacar screenshots a la conversación, eh, mucho que mejor porque vamos a practicar esa conversación que va a aparecer en el video. So we are going to listen twice and then we are going to make a practice. Vamos a hacer una práctica luego de escucharlo. So I'm going to share the screen with you and we are going to listen the conversation. And give me a second, I'm going to do it like bigger. And we are going to begin, I don't have the sound right now. In this class, you will listen and follow a conversation about physical skills. Hi everyone, are you ready to listen to another conversation? This time, we will learn to ask questions using how. Listen and repeat. I'm a real fitness freak. 
You're in great shape, Keith. Thanks. I guess I'm a real fitness freak. How often do you work out? Well, I do aerobics twice a week, and I play tennis every week. Tennis? That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, do you want to play sometime? Uh, how well do you play? Pretty well, I guess. Well, all right, but I'm not very good. No problem. I'll give you a few tips. Ready to listen to another conversation. This time we will learn to ask questions using how. Listen and repeat. I'm a real fitness freak. You're in great shape, Keith. Thanks. I guess I'm a real fitness freak. How often do you work out? Well, I do aerobics twice a week and I play tennis every week. Tennis? That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, do you want to play sometime? Uh, how well do you play? Pretty well, I guess. Well, all right, but I'm not very good. No problem. I'll give you a few tips. Okay, there we have the conversation, and I have the image on the document because we are going to um, read again the um the phrases but in this case we are going to do it like kind of slow and one by one and after that you are going to practice this conversation so in here we have two people talking about uh, something that they do and the name of the conversation is i am a real fitness freak es como alguien que está bastante obsesionado con esto de, del deporte y que pues Uh, tiene como sus rutinas y pasa mucho tiempo en el gimnasio que es casi como las la personas que le gusta mucho una cosa so we have a Ruth and Kay and we have the first statement the first part of the conversation you are in great shape Kay you, en este caso ustedes pueden decir you are o you are como ustedes se sientan un poco más cómodos you are in great shape Kay Thanks, I guess I'm a real fitness freak. Thanks, I guess I'm a real fitness freak. How often do you work out? How often do you work out? Well, I do aerobics twice a week and I play tennis every week. Tennis? That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, do you want to play some time? Um, how well do you play? Pretty well, I guess. Well, all right, but I am not very good. No problem. I'll give you a few tips. Entonces tenemos a dos personas que pues una está como um, diciéndole que está en una muy buena figura, una buena condición física y pues Case lo sabe y le dice gracias. Yo creo que soy como un obsesivo, ¿verdad? Un del, del deporte o del, o del fitness y le dice que tan seguido tú pues haces ejercicio y él le dice bueno hago aeróbicos dos veces a la semana, juego tenis todas las semanas o toda la semana y le dice ya tenis suena como mucha diversión ¿verdad? suena como algo muy divertido eh, ¿quieres jugar alguna vez? Ah, ¿qué tan bien juegas? y le dice él ah, bastante bien creo, y él le dice, ah, bueno, eh, no soy muy buena, y él dice, no hay problema, yo te puedo dar algunos consejos, and that is the conversation that they are, like, having, and in that case, you can see the different questions that we have there, eh, we have a rule that begins with the question, how often do you work out, how often, In that case, we are using the word how, that is a WH word. And also we are talking about uh, the times. We are talking about the uh, adverbs of frequency because we are talking about uh, the different times in which he is practicing uh, sports. Then we have, how well do you play? How well do you play? That is another question using how. ¿Qué también juegas? 
And we have just two. Yes, two different questions using how. Now, it's time for you to read the conversation. I will give you five minutes to read the conversation, to express, to practice in your space. And after this, the five minutes, I'm going to create the a breakup rooms with a partner. We are going to do it in couples. Vamos a hacer una eh, práctica en parejas, pero le voy a dar cinco minutos para que lean despacio de la conversación, vayan practicando la pronunciación. Si hay dudas con alguna pronunciación, lo pueden hacer. Después de los cinco minutos, vamos a entrar a un breakup rooms en el cual van a estar con otra persona, o sea, vamos a hacerlos en pareja, no en grupos, para que puedan tener una práctica y voy a ir revisando los breakout rooms de todos ustedes. Así que tenemos five minutes. Let me see the time. 8.31. Uh, we are going to begin with the practice at 8.36. 8.36, comenzamos con la práctica. So, let's practice, let's read the conversation, and then we are going to do an oral practice. Let's go.
Okay, it's time. I'm going to stop this one. And we're going to divide ourselves into small groups. So I'm going to create a couple of rooms. Yeah, I think we are going to do it. Mm -hmm. 10. I guess in some of the uh, the very card rooms, it could be like three people, but in that case, it's like we don't have more options because if I create one more um, in some of the rooms, we are going to have just one person. So we are going to do it like this. So we are going to go to the breakup rooms right now. Okay, we need to go to the breakup rooms, please. Okay, let me see in which we have. Uh huh. I'm going to move you from room number one. Okay, um, Janet, Eneida, and Rosa, si pueden entrar a los breakup rooms, tiene que aparecerles una invitación para que puedan accesar a sus eh, rooms a practicar la conversación. Seis. Ok, ah, no, sí. We are Hi. We are fine in our group. It is supposed that you are four. So we can uh, practice two and two. Pueden utilizar, eh, ustedes pueden decidir hacer dos parejas y eh, practicar dos veces la conversación, pero una pareja primero y la otra luego. Let me see. Teacher. Tell me. No sé si me uní al grupo, no sé, pero me veo que no estoy dentro de un grupo. No sé sí. si tengo problemas ahí. Aparece en el grupo 1. Estamos en el, en el breakout room del grupo 1. Está Raquel, está Ana Beatriz y también está Luisana. Ok. Ok. Teacher, I give you apologies because I, this moment I can't Turn on the camera. Ah, don't worry. But you can practice okay, right now. Para thank que you. podamos avanzar, podemos empezar la práctica para que no nos tardemos mucho. Okay. 
I practice with uh, Rosanna. Rosanna. Okay. Okay. Uh, I start. Uh, no sé si puedo comenzar yo <laughs> o oh, usted. Okay. Usted? Okay. Empieza usted si quiere. Okay. Uh, you're in the gray shape, okay? Thanks. I guess in a real fitness freak. How often do you work out? Well, I do aerobics twice a week and I play, I play tennis every week. Tennis? Hello. So Hi, teacher. Hello. Um, Tell me, what is the problem? Um, I'm alone. Uh, what happened with Janet? Janet, are you there? Hi. Perdón, Hello. tenía problema con, con el audio. Oh, okay. So you are a couple now. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Este... Practicamos la conversación entonces. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Janet, um, you are root or kid? Root. Okay. You are in great shape, Kate. Thanks. I guess I'm a real fitness freak. How often do you work out? Well, I do aerobics twice a week, and I play I play tennis every week. Tennis? That sounds like a lot of fun. Um. Do you want to play sometime? Oh, how? Hello, everyone. Did you practice the conversation already? I think you are not. Okay, so we're going to go to another breakout rooms and then we're going to end with the practice in a couple of minutes. So you need to wait a little bit for the main session. Tengo un, pro tengo un problema. Este, no me han dado acceso a la plataforma. A la plataforma. Así es. Okay, eh, let tengo me... El curso, tengo el... Tengo el curso anterior. Eh. Okay, let me see. I think. Usted fue el que escribió en el grupo, ¿verdad? Sí, sí, escribí. Sí. Okay, entonces yo voy a mandar a uh, el mensaje que usted escribió. Eh, voy a mandarlo a alguno de los eh, encargados para que vean cuál fue el problema con el curso, porque dice que le aparece el anterior. Entonces me imagino que al enviar el mensaje que usted envió ya al grupo, alguien se va a contactar con usted para que puedan ayudarlo en ese proceso. Bueno, muchas gracias. Ok. So let's go to the other one. We are on the group number three. I'm going to go to the four. Lo, lo dice de una sola vez. I'll give you. I, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a few tips. Okay. Yeah. Right. Ah, pues si quiere comienzo yo y va usted con Kate. Kate. Okay. You're, you're in great shape, Kate. Thanks. I guess I am real fitness freak. How often do you wear up? Well, I do aerobic twice a week and I play tennis every week. Tennis? That's so like a lot, a lot of fun. 
uh, do you want to play sometime? Uh, how well do you play? But okay, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hello, chair. We we practice a lot of, and I, I, I in this moment talking about about nosotros. <laughs> That's okay, don't worry. The the <laughs> thing is that you practice the conversation. Very good. So I'm just yeah. going to look for the other groups and we are going to go to the main session in a couple of minutes. So don't worry, you keep uh, talking about yourself. Don't worry. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, and I, uh, where do you work? I work at the bank. A bank. Empezaron a escuchar la ambulancia y todo lo demás. Ah, qué terrible. Pero sí fue cosa seria. Sí, sí. Uh -huh. Bueno, creo que ya terminamos. Hi, hi teacher. Hello, hi, did you practice? Hello. Yes. yes. Ah, that's Your good. Finish. Okay, yes. very good. Yes. I'm just looking for the other groups and we are going to go to the main okay. session in a couple no of problem. minutes. That's good. Thank okay. You. Okay, teacher. Okay. Hello, teacher. Hello. Did you practice Hello. the conversation? Yes. Yes. Yes, teacher. Good. Good. I think we are going to go to the main session. In a couple of minutes, so don't worry. Vamos a ir a la, a la sesión eh, en un minuto aproximadamente. Así que ahí les va, les va a llegar la notificación para que volvamos. Okay, okay. thanks, teacher. Thanks. thanks to you. Teacher, microphone. I can, I can hear you, teacher. Sorry. Oh my God. That is something that happens. I don't remember don't that worry. I have uh, off my microphone. Thank you. No worry. It's okay. I was talking and talking and nobody is listening to me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Nobody. <laughs> I saw your mouth at least. Yes, and I was thinking that I, I have my microphone on. Okay. Thank you for telling me. Okay. okay um, I think we are complete. I am not sure. No, there are people that are coming right now. Okay. Now I think we are complete. Okay. That was the practice. I was um, listening to some of you because uh, it is not a uh, lot of time and I know that you are practicing very good at the conversation and that is the main thing about this kind of courses because we need to, to produce all the, the uh, things that we are learning. So we are going to make a little review about the, um, the information about how and I think we don't have enough time to do the questions. So the questions, we are going to do it at the beginning of the session that we are going to have tomorrow. Vamos a hacer la actividad de las preguntas eh, mañana iniciando la sesión porque vamos a hacerlo como tipo, I don't know, like, como una, una rifa, ¿verdad? Vamos a ir ahí diciendo nombres, Ustedes me van diciendo números, yo tengo una lista de preguntas y vamos a ir preguntando, ¿verdad? Son um, kind of funny questions, but we're going to do it like 
an icebreaker tomorrow. Now, we are just going to make a little review about the questions or the use of a how questions because we are, don't have like enough time. We're just going to have eight minutes and we're going to do it like this. Give me a second. I'm looking for something. Okay. So in this case, we know that we have different uh, kind of question in English. Uh, we have the yes, no questions or uh, closed questions. And also we have the open questions. And in this case, the open questions are the question that we can create with the WH words. And you know that the WH words are what, where, when, why, who, and how. In this case, we are going to focus on how. So here, questions with how. In this case, how uh, generally ask about the manner or method of something. Básicamente, cuando utilizamos el how, estamos preguntando sobre la manera de hacer una cosa o el método para hacerlo. Básicamente, instrucciones. Ask about... The manner are or methods of something. And we have a question. Vamos a este ejemplo. How did you get here? How did you get here? ¿Cómo llegaste? Estamos preguntando por... ¿Qué paso siguió? ¿Cómo lo hizo? Eh, ¿De qué manera uh, o en qué transporte lo hizo? We're asking for something. Something specific in this case, the manner of the method of something. And we can answer very simple by bicycle. En bicicleta. No vamos a pedir específicamente, ¿verdad? ¿Qué camino seguiste? Porque ahí estaríamos pidiendo direcciones. And we have another question that is very uh, simple and it's very common. How are you today? How are you today? ¿Cómo están hoy? ¿Cómo se sienten hoy? And we can say, I'm fine. Thanks. Or we can say... I'm tired. Mm, we can say also, I am feeling a little sick. In this case, we have different um, ways in we can express or answer this question. Then we have another one. The first one is like um, ask about the manner or method of something. And the second one is how can be used with much and many. You know that uh, we have a specific words for um, uh, uncountable and countable nouns. In this case, with how it is not related to the uncountable and countable nouns. We can use how with both expressions and we are not going to focus on the things that we can count or not. Um, el many y el much, nosotros los utilizamos específicamente con nombres contables o no contables. Cada uno de ellos tiene su categoría. En este caso, el how lo vamos a utilizar con ambos. No es necesario ver si son nombres contables o no, sino que el how lo vamos a utilizar con ambos. No hay una distinción. can be used with much and many. And we have here the question, how much money do you have? How much money do you have? ¿Qué, ¿Cuánto dinero tienes? And we can answer uh, $5. Uh, 
Uh, we can say $100. A couple of coins. Un par de monedas. Different kind of answers. Then we have another question, but in this case with many. How many people know that? How many people know that? ¿Cuántas personas saben eso? And we can say three. A couple of people. Un par de personas, ¿no? Just my sister. Or we can say nobody. Diferentes respuestas. Tres personas, a couple of people, just my sister, or nobody. Then, how is used with adjectives? How is used with adjectives? Que obviamente ustedes saben que los adjetivos nos sirven para describir. So, we have the question here. How tall are you? How tall are you? ¿Qué tan alto eres? ¿O qué, ¿Cuál es tu estatura? And in this case, because it's um, an example that we can use in the U.S., we are going to talk about feet. Um, no, we are going, uh, I mean, feet, not feet. And we are not going to use it like here with matters. Vamos a utilizarlo con pies y no con, con metros, porque es la medida que se utiliza más que todo allá en Estados Unidos. Así que lo vamos a hacer con ese ejemplo. So, in this case, it says six feet tall. And we're going to see another one. How hot is? How hot is it? ¿Qué tan caliente está? And we can answer, it's very hot. It's very hot. And then we have like uh, different words that we can add to the um, question. Hay también otras preguntas que se agregan junto con el how, como el how long, que nos pregunta sobre la distancia o el, el, la medida de algo, how far, qué tan lejos queda de una cosa, how come, qué tal, cómo pasó. Pero en este caso nos vamos a quedar más que todo con estas que no entran en las otras categorías de las preguntas. So, remember that tomorrow we are going to make the activity at the beginning of the session, and then we are going to continue with the other topics. So, I just want to say thank you for your time, and we are going to end the session here. We are going to see each other tomorrow in the session number three. So, have a really good night, and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night, teacher. Good night. 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 Good night.